Hello and welcome to Knife Chats. If you're out there, uh, maybe you'll show up soon. In any case, I thought I would uh, take a little time to show off a few things that I'm uh, going to uh, be talking about in the near future and also just show off a few knives that recently showed up at my door. Uh, you see this big box back here. This is for an upcoming uh, video I'm going to be doing uh, on um, my top five uh, pin knives. Uh, those little knives, ones that are under three and a half inches or so. So that'll be coming up in the very near future, by very near future within the next month or so, because I don't even know what my top five pin knives are yet, but they're in this box here, or this little drawer, and I will be talking about that in the near future. But in the meantime, uh, let's take a look at a few things that showed up at my door recently. Um, IBH, uh, this was the... Uh, Rough Riders uh, Happy Halloween Barlow. I got one of the early ones that unfortunately lacked the uh, blade etch. And when I contacted uh, uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works about it, they said, oops, sorry, they all should have a blade etch. And they said they would get one out to me. Uh, and one thing led to another and uh, kind of slipped through the cracks for uh, a couple days or so. And then when I contacted them again, they said, Oh, uh, sorry, uh, we're out of stock, but I tell you what we can do. Uh, you can either wait for the stock to fill back up, or what we'll do is send you one of the prototypes uh, for the, uh, for the uh, Happy Halloween Barlow. And that's what they did. They sent me one of the uh, prototypes. So if you notice, this is the way the etch is. Hi, Chris Osh. Uh, this is the way the... Uh, the etching on the bone looks on the uh, one that everyone got and this was the way it was going to be on the prototype and then uh, they had a second option on the back on the prototype and the prototype does have the blade etch that uh, shows up on the uh, the production version so um, I'm one of the lucky few people uh, well there's only two of the prototypes out there so I have one of the prototypes, uh, one of the ones that uh, got uh, sent out without a blade etch, and I also uh, saw that somebody was selling these uh, online at just uh, 4 or $5 above the uh, list price. I made them an offer, and I'm going to get one sent to me uh, right at the same, uh, well, $2 more, including the shipping, than the, uh, the one that... Uh, SMKW was selling, so getting one another one of them for twenty seven. The knives were twenty five dollars uh, through SMKW plus shipping. So I'm going to have a whole set of these uh, Happy Halloween knives, including uh, a prototype. So that's pretty cool. Another thing I finally got a hold of because somebody was selling these uh, around twenty bucks or so is one of those old Camco uh, whistle rocket knives. Um, don't know if you heard that or not but you blow in there and it'll whistle supposedly if you take the lanyard thing here and spin it over your head it will also whistle i've tried it it doesn't work um and uh you notice that blade it has a half stop uh real city museum um this was somewhere in sandy pond new york so you have a little spear blade and then a cap lifter screwdriver on it and it looks like a little rocket ship, like a Buck Rogers rocket ship with a little yellow top. There's the whistle on the inside. You blow in there and it will make a sound. Um, these things are, are pretty cool. And uh, it was very much uh, just a little novelty toy for little boys and such. So um, to find one in good shape is kind of rough. But uh, apparently uh, Sandy Pond uh, Rail Museum, when it closed... Uh, people bought a, a lot of them and so they're hitting the market again um what else did i find uh this is a a stockman that i paid too much for but i'm a grandpa so i thought i would get one that had a grandpa shield it's uh by camillus it's in rough shape i'm gonna have to get a better one this is made after 89 uh but it does have nice saw cut delrin on it so i will get another one i don't know what the person was thinking when they hit the the uh, 
the uh, springs on the back with a grinder. So I'm going to have to try and work that out. Uh, that's going to be interesting. But otherwise, it's a decent enough U-shape, uh, and it will definitely be something I'll end up carrying. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, if you notice in the description, oh, one other knife that I recently got. Uh, this actually just came today, and that's what prompted me to actually uh, uh, put out the video. I haven't even pulled it out of a little plastic sleeve yet. It's one of those uh, harder to find uh, um, classic uh, limited editions. And if you notice, it's got all these constellations in it, including you've got the Victorinox shield there as a constellation. And then on the back, you've got a uh, like a little Swiss Army classic as a constellation. Um, and I can't remember what this one was called. But I'll have to look it up. But I'll be doing a video on that again. Uh, in the near future. The person made some kind of little uh, uh, lanyard for it. I'll probably end up cutting that off. I don't need a big lanyard on the end of this little knife. I know a lot of people like them that way, but I don't. Uh, but that was the other recent purchase that I uh, managed to come up with. Now, uh, if you noticed, um, in the uh, title, I was talking about half stops. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk about that a little bit is because uh, there's some confusion about them. Uh, first of all, every knife pretty much stops halfway open. Uh, but there's some knives that they say have a half stop. And you saw it um, on the little whistle knife here. It, when you open this blade up, it pops to an open position. You notice it, it, it stops halfway. And that's what a half stop is. However, just about any knife uh, will hit a neutral spot at the very top when you're opening it. So this is a, they, they say that, um, the reason I'm showing these two knives is they always say that a half stop is a sign of a quality made knife. And you know, all really good quality made knives have a great half stop. Well, that's a bunch of bunk. A half stop is just a feature on a knife. Um, here is a, uh, a Great Eastern Cutlery 4-inch uh, toothpick. Guess what? It does not have a half stop. It just rocks around. Now, if you notice, though, at this point, all the way to here, the blade will just stay wherever you put it. And that's because it basically has like a... Hi, Mr. J. It has basically a false half stop. Somewhere in the middle here, that blade is not going to close any further unless you apply pressure. Um, the difference between a, 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 a clearly defined half stop is that it pops into that position. Uh, and it doesn't mean anything about the, uh, the price of the knife or anything else. All it means is that if you can see there, the, uh, the back of the tang is flat so that when you open it up, it stops moving uh, and it lays flat against the back spring. In the case of um, this uh, GEC, if you notice, it is rounded all the way around. So what will happen is when it gets to a certain point, it will stop. It's in a neutral spot. It doesn't move any further than it needs to move. You have to move it around and you have to pull it all the way open. Um, which is better on a knife is really up to the user. Some people love the ones without a half stop because they can just rock it closed. Makes it real easy. Uh, and especially if you're pressing this against the back of your uh, uh, pant leg or something and you're just closing the blade, it'll snap closed. Uh, and that's really the difference between what I would call a neutral spot in the in the closing and an actual half stop. The uh, the half stop, eh, uh, it's a nice feature sometimes. Uh, they say it's a safety feature. For some people, it's not very safe uh, because um, it um, they they're just not used to the way it works or anything, or it is problematic because they have to uh, push on the knife blade twice to close it. So um, half stops, some knives will have it, some won't. This one does. This is by Queen. 
Um, does it mean it's a more expensive knife? Not really, because we have here a Rough Rider also with a half stop. Um, and it just means that they flattened out a portion of the back of the tang so that when the blade gets to a certain spot, it stops. Um, here's a very old scout knife, um, and it has a half stop on the can opener, and it has a half stop on uh, the punch, but the blade, no, there's no half stop on it, never had it, same with the can opener. So for some reason, the knife has half stops on some blades, and some blades it doesn't have half stops. Uh, it really doesn't mean anything about the quality of the knife. Um, this was made by Utica. Utica makes great knives. Uh, it's, it says it's the Iroquois Knife Company, but it was Utica that made it. Um, Queen, half stop. They have plenty of knives without a half stop. Are, are we going to say that this Queen knife is a better Queen knife because it has a half stop? That would be kind of goofy. Um, it really comes down to, hi, Mr. J, thanks. I like the Rough Riders, too. Um, really what it just comes down to is the design feature of it. Um, and they often say it's a safety feature. And you see this with uh, uh, the Camilla's uh, Cub Scout knives. And I think that was one of the selling points because the earlier Imperial Cub Scout knives did not have a half stop. A more important safety feature on the uh, uh, on all the Cub Scout knives really is a liner lock because if you really want a blade to stop closing on you, um, a half stop isn't going to do a bit of good. It might stop a little bit from an accidental closure, but really what you need is some kind of either back lock or a liner lock. That's what really locks a blade in place. A half stop is just a feature. It makes the knife make a little bit more noise. Um, does that mean uh, a knife without a half stop is a bad knife? I think a lot of people would argue just the opposite. Really, it comes down to who was making the knife and how well they built it. Um, so that's really what I wanted to talk about, about half stops. Um, they're really just a feature. You'll find them on inexpensive knives. You'll find them on expensive knives. You'll find plenty of knives uh, that are extremely expensive that do not feature a half stop. And it's just the way it is. And you will also find that, um, that more likely half stops show up on knives that have all the blades on one end. So a jackknife as opposed to um, like a Stockman. Stockman's have blades on both ends, pen knives and such. They usually do not have half stops on them. And sometimes when you do see half stops on a, a pen knife, um, it'll be on one blade. So this uh, Dog Bone Jack by Rough Rider, no half stop there, but they do have a half stop on the backside blade. So why, I don't know, but that's what you see sometimes. And the same thing with this scout knife. The half stops are on one end, but not on the other end. And I don't understand why, because they could have easily put the half stops on both ends, but they chose not to. Um, and like I said, this is probably one of the most expensive folders I have. No half stop whatsoever. So there you go. Uh, if anyone is telling you that a half stop is the sign of a quality made knife they're just feeding you a, a it's a sales pitch that's all it is it's just a sales pitch um don't buy it uh well you might buy the knife but don't buy the sales pitch it isn't necessarily meaning that the knife is a much better knife and i get it because i know a lot of rough riders um come with half stops today um this is a rough rider I'm getting a low battery mention. Uh, this Rough Rider, Barlow, I really like it. Has a half stop on both blades. Um, this older Rough Rider, this was made on an older frame. It lacks a, uh, a half stop. Um, does it mean this knife is less functional or anything? 
No, it just means it doesn't have a half stop. That's all it really means. Uh, both of them are well-built, uh, solid made knives. Uh, both of them are featuring the same 440A stainless steel. So quality wise, both knives are about the same. The only difference is one has a half stop and the other one uh, basically has a neutral spot at the top of the, uh, uh, of the blade opening or at 90 degrees. So that's the difference. Uh, more important is uh, finding out where that blade snaps closed because uh, with a half stop, the snapping close also comes down kind of low. So you can still open it a little bit before it pops. In any case, I think I've uh, run along on uh, the half stops long enough now. Uh, I will mention once again that uh, the, all the knives you see in the back up here, those will be showing up in a future video on um, pin knives. Uh, knives that are basically under three and a half inches long with a blade on either end. And uh, I'm going to try and out of these knives up there, choose which one or choose my top five pen knives. Uh, I'm going beyond just equal end pen knives. I'm looking at all of the uh, pen knives that I have. Uh, as long as they got two blades operating on one spring, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, so that'll be in a future video. Um, thanks for joining me today. Uh, hope to hear from all of you guys soon. And uh, thanks for dropping by. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'll try and do a few more of these uh, live videos uh, earlier in the day and in the evenings also. Um, thanks again. And I'm going to be splitting now because my battery's dying. Thank you.